Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. We are going to talk about the two different types of test invitations that you will receive while working with Testerware. These two types are test case executions and exploratory tests. The main difference between these two is that while test case executions are tests that are performed in a structured manner, exploratory tests are performed in an ad hoc manner. To shed a bit more light on this, for exploratory tests, you are given a direction and a scope of the test cycle, but it is up to you to explore the app and its functionalities so that you uncover as many bugs as possible. In contrast, for test case executions, you will receive a set of instructions that you need to follow and you are going to compare your interaction with the app while performing those instructions with the expected behavior that is also present in the test case document and you will report bugs where the instructions and what you are seeing in the app is not according to the expected behavior of the app. For both of these types of testing, it's important to have your documentation at the ready. So keep your test specification document open in your browser at all times and also regularly check the bug checker of that project for new bugs that you may need to be aware of before submitting bugs yourself. So let's take a look at an example of how a test case execution invitation would look like. I have an invitation on my screen right now. So this is an invitation to a functional test case execution cycle sent by one of the test managers that handles a particular project. In the invitation, I'm going to find some guidelines for performing test cases, information about the app that I am testing, deadlines for this test, a link to my assigned test case document and a link to the test cycle page. I recommend you read all of the information in this email because it will help you along the way. So we have the link to the test case document and I was mentioning earlier that test case executions are related to a certain structure that you need to follow. So this is an example of how a test case would look like. We have a section, a subsection, the steps that I need to take during this test and what I should be seeing inside the app while performing these steps. I will go deeper into the structure of the test cases and how you should execute them in a separate video. For now, let's go and see an invitation to an exploratory test cycle. So this is a generic invitation to an exploratory test. I can see the timeline, I can see the device requirements, any special requirements, and I have a view more information button that leads me to my tester work profile from where I can also access the test specification document. While we are on the subject of the test specification document, let's look at an example right here. So this is how it will look like when you will first see a test spec document. It contains information about about the app you are about to test, about the prerequisites of the test, and also what to test, what not to test, and so on and so forth. I am encouraging you to read the whole test specification document and have it open while testing, and also keep in focus the scope and the what not to test sections, because these will determine whether your bugs will be accepted or not. It's important that you don't waste time testing features that are not in the scope of the test cycle. Okay, so that's been it for an introduction to test case executions and exploratory tests. I hope you found it useful and stay tuned because we are going to have more videos on the specifics of testing in different sort of projects and much much more. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next test cycles and in the next video. Goodbye.